Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today inshallah we'll be looking at how the husband should prepare for sexual relations in order to enjoy their union to the full extent. And we are starting to write. <laughs> How are you doing? My name is Ahmed. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to make your pre or post marriage life blissful and pleasurable, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you do not miss anything. I'm very sure you have all watched our previous video as we talk uh, about how the wife should prepare for sexual relations in order to have mind-blowing sex. What I have already mentioned in our previous video regarding to the wife's psychological and physical preparation also applies to the husband. So I suggest you go view the our previous video because it's really educational and important. With the obvious exception of some matters that I directed exclusively to the wife. As such, you the husband should also take note of the general guidance I outlined here for Allah Most High says and women have rights similar to the rights against them in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter verse 228 nevertheless certain specific issues need to be addressed and examined from the point of view of the husband also so I've coupled some few powerful tips that will inshallah help you in order to achieve this and we are starting right now. The first tip I have for you today is cleanliness and personal hygiene. You are seriously mistaken if you think that your wife will be sexually attracted to you at all cost. Nah. Even if you are dirty, unkept, in an unkept state, giving off bad orders from your mouth and body, you should try to know that a woman is a sentient creature with feelings and sensitivities even more delicate than that of a man. At times, she may only be prevented by the bashfulness from making her feelings known to her husband. As such, you must ensure that you take every single means to keep yourself clean and hygienic. As the Prophet ﷺ was the purest of the people, you warned husbands of the detrimental consequences of not remaining clean. Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anhu relates that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wash your clothes, take care of your hair, use the siwak, adorn yourself and remain clean. For the children of Israel will not do this, hence your women committed adultery. Furthermore, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, I love to adorn myself for my wife as much as I wish her to adorn herself for me. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned 10 matters from the pure, primordial and natural disposition of a man known as Fitra, which are from the ways of all the prophets of Allah, particularly Sayyidina Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and sound human nature is naturally inclined towards them. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha relate the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, 10 things are from Upright natural disposition, fitra, trimming the mustache, letting the beards grow, using the tooth stick, raising the nose, cutting the nails, washing the joints, plugging the hair from under the armpit, shaving the pubic hair, cleaning one's part, private part with water, that is by performing istinja. The narrator said, I have forgotten the tent, but it may have been washing the mouth. As such, in terms of personal hygiene, the husband should keep the following points I will be sharing with you in mind. The first point is that you should try to ensure that you remain clean by avoiding all sorts of death, filth and bad odor. After relieving yourself, try to clean your genital area with water by performing istinja. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam included instinja among the 10 matters of upright natural disposition as I mentioned earlier. Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha addressing the Muslim woman said, Tell your husbands to wash their private part with water for I am too shy to tell them so. The Messenger of Allah used to do that. The hands should be washed 
Wash your hand thoroughly after you have relieved yourself, preferably using soap until all traces of ritual impurities najasa are removed. After urinating, you are required to ensure that all drops of urine are completed, completely removed from your urine passage. Istibra. And the second point regarding cleanliness and hygiene is the ho- you should try to make sure that you avoid anything that causes distaste or is a turn off for your wife. Take special care that you do not have bad breath or body odor. In order to remove bad body odor, you are supposed to have regular baths, especially when intending to have a sexual relations with your wife. Applying perfume is a sunnah of the beloved messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it shouldn't be neglected. There are many natural scents that can be used such as misk, ambar, oud. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said misk is the most pleasant of scents. One may also use mainstream deodorants and body sprays provided they are halal. Likewise, in order to, pro- to remove bad odor from the mouth, you should try to brush your mouth and teeth thoroughly. Mouth raising, madmada is one of the ten matters of natural disposition, fitra. The mouth should be washed in order to remove all traces of food that stick to the teeth and damage them. A mouthwash may be used provided it contains no haram ingredients. Using this work was also mentioned as one of the ten matters of fitra. Sayyidina Hudayfa radiallahu anhu relates, Whenever the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa got off for prayer at, the, at night, he will clean his mouth rigorously with the suwak. Imam Nawawi in his commentary of Sahih Muslim said that using the suwak to brush the mouth and teeth is recommended at all times, but especially when one has a, has a bad odor of the mouth. Ensuring that the mouth is clean and fresh is extremely important when the couple intend on having sexual relations. Surely it is wrong for you to kiss your wife passionately without having washed your mouth and brushing your teeth properly. Smokers or anyone who habitually consumes distasteful things such as garlic, onion, should take extra precaution as it can kill the passion and desire of your spouse. And the third point is... Uh, you should try to pay attention to your attire and external appearance by dressing net- neatly and wearing clean iron clothes. You shouldn't ha- get those your tattered pajamas after you are back. No, you should wear very clean and beautiful iron clothes. For Allah Most High is beautiful and likes beauty. Try to change your clothes regularly and keep them neat and tidy. It is surely wrong for you to walk around in Guilty on washed clothes. Some husband fail to give due importance to these. Although it is really important and engage in sexual relations with their wife, even in their work clothes. Subhanallah, not only is this a turn off for the wife, it also reflects selfishness on your part as the husband. As Sayyidina Jabir bin Abdullah relates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw another man wearing dirty clothes and said, could this man not find something to wash his garment with? Sayyidina Abu Dhar said to Sahal ibn Hanzali, as such, the sunnah is to remain clean, wearing neat clothing and smelling good. A man, you should try to dress neatly, even with your friends and relatives. Your attire should be clean and elegant, not ugly and unsightly. If you look good in clean clothes, you will be pleasant to look at and people will enjoy your presence. If, and if it is opposite, people will look down upon you and not even give you any importance. This is even more important where a husband and wife relationship is concerned. Imam Ibn al jawzi states in Sayyid al Khathir that staying filthy is the cause of the wife disliking her husband. There is a lot of cases regarding these. As she feel uncomfortable discussing with it with her husband, but it will result in her losing interest in you with, with time if you are really dirty and unpleasant to look at. In remaining clean and pure, the wife will be drawn towards you. Women are but sisters or the other half of men. Shaka'ik.
And just as a man may dislike something for her, she too may dislike something of him. And the uh, fourth point is keeping the hair, whether it is the hair of the head or the beard, clean and neat is also important. You should try to oil and comb your hair. If you are unable to maintain the hair of the head properly, you should have it trimmed or shaved. The beard should be combed and kept neat and oiled if possible. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira relate the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He who has hair should take care of it. It is also permissible, rather recommended for a man to dye the hair of his head and beard, provided the ingredient used in the hair dye are halal. The best form of hair dye is to, up, to be applied to the hair or beard is henna. Ensure that you shave at least trim your mustache as in the hadith I earlier quoted of the 10 matters of fitra, trimming the mustache was also included. As such, shortening the mustache is an agreed upon sunnah and to keep the mustache long to the point that it covers the top of the upper lip is blameworthy. It is considered to be unhygienic because food and other undesirable things are likely to get stuck in such a mustache. This becomes more important for a husband since a long mustache may prove to be uncomfortable, to say the least, when the couples kiss one another. After agreeing that a man should shorten his mustache, scholars disagree about the extent to which the mustache should be trimmed. It is better to completely remove one's mustache, or is it enough to shorten the mustache such that it no longer covers the top of the mouth of the upper lip? The difference of opinion stems from the fact that the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mention two things some mention shortening the mustache whilst other mention removing the mustache from the hanafi school imam abu jafar al tahawi explaining his share of ma'ani al athar that it is recommended mustahab to shave the mustache completely and this is better than shortening it affirming that this was the position of imam abu hanifa and both his main students he also reports his, uh, with his authentic chains of transmission that this was the practice of great companions including Abdullah ibn Umar, Abu Huraira, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, Abu Uthay, Usayr al Sa'idi, Rafi ibn Khadij, Jabir ibn Abdullah, Anas ibn Malik and others. Regardless of this minor difference of opinions between the various juries for Qaha, what is clear is that all the juries are anonymous on the impermissibility of keeping one's mustache long to the point that it cover one's upper lip this is so because Zaid bin Arkam radiallahu anhu anhuma relates that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said whoever does not take from his mustache is not one of us those who have a habit of keeping long mustache must take heed Take heed to this, it is wrong to leave the mustaches long and thick, since the warning in the prophetic hadith is quite thin, and not only is shortening the mustache the way of the prophet, it also helps maintain one's beauty and elegance. And the fifth matter regarding cleanliness and hygiene is, make sure that you remove your pubic and underarm hair regularly, untrimmed hair in the pubic area and armpit is a cause of bad body odor as death, sweat may gather there. Removing underarm hair and shaving pubic hair are both included in the 10 matters of fitra. As such, it is disliked to leave hair on these areas to the point that the hair become long. It is recommended to remove the pubic and armpit hair weekly, ideally on a Friday. It is not disliked to the ladies to two weeks. However, it is blameworthy beyond that and sinful beyond 40 days. In a similar manner, you should... Clip your nails and not let them grow long. Given that dirt is easily gathered under the nails, clipping the nails is also from the matters of fitra. As such, it is blameworthy to leave the nails and cut beyond two weeks and sinful beyond 40 days. And the second tip I'll be sharing with you today is good treatment and seduction. A very important aspect of a husband's psychological preparation is Preceding sexual relations with good treatment, kind words, playfulness, and affection. Islam generally commands the husband to treat his wife honorably at 
all times like alone when the couple intend on engaging on sexual relations that's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious quran live with them on a footing of kindness and equity if you take a dislike to them it may be that you dislike a thing and allah brings about through it a great deal of good the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized both verbally and in action the importance of treating one's wife kindly Sayyidina Abu Huraira relate the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The most perfect of believers in, belie- in belief is the best of them in character, and the best of you are those who are the best to their women. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a living example of how a husband should treat his wife. You are supposed to be extremely gentle and kind to all your wives, and treat them in an amicable manner. The Prophet ﷺ was affectionate, humorous, and considerate towards them. Many examples of the Messenger ﷺ, treatment of his wives can be found in various books of prophetic narrations. But Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, related the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, said, The best among you is the one who is the best to his family, and I am the best among you to my family. As such, treating one's wife kindly is a general ruling of Islam and is essential when one intends to have sexual relation. How a couple treats one another outside the bedroom will have a direct impact on their bedroom behavior. To set the scene, you should be gentle and affectionate, expressing your love for her with words that will will seduce her and try to remember that women get turned on by what is said and the meaning behind the words. It is all about how d- these words make her feel. It is a set of actions and every small thing you do really matters and will help contribute to a healthy sexual encounter. There is a subtle indication of this in the Quran also. As Allah was high, Azza wa Jal says, your wives are tillage for you to cultivate, so approach your tillage from where you wish. But do some good acts for yourself beforehand and fear Allah. Some tafsir of the Quran said that the phrase but do some good acts for yourself beforehand refers to the importance of things that come before sex itself. Such as having a correct intention, reciting appropriate dua and foreplay in increasing interest and making the matter easier. In the hadith, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described how disgraceful it is for a husband to treat his wife cruelly and then have sex with her. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, One of you beat his wife as he would beat a slave and then may have sex with her in the evening. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is displaying astonishment at a man who mistreats his wife and then has the audacity to engage in sexual relations with her. Muslim husbands really must take heed of this. Some men outside of the bedroom fail to treat their wife with warmth and affection. But when it comes to sex, all of a sudden, they become caring and compassionate. Not only is this selfish, it also shows what the wife actually means to the husband. The sunnah is to precede sexual relation with tenderness and affection. The husband should use the appropriate means to seduce his wife through his words and action. In this way, the wife will also be extremely receptive to his sexual advances and will lead to a wonderful, mind-blowing sexual relation and you'll be able to, uh, to enjoy your moment together to the full extent. If you, inshallah, make use of the tips I share with you in this beneficial video the scene will be set for a passionate and enjoyable section of a husband and wife union inshallah alhamdulillah we have come to the end of our today's lecture may it help us have a positive change in our relations and may allah grant us from our spouses and offspring the apple of our eyes and make us leaders of the pious amen and may Allah unite us who are single with, with God-fearing partners and inshallah that will be the apple of our eyes. I mean, please subscribe and drop a like if you benefited from this video. 
Let me meet in the comment section if you have a question, suggestion, or additional knowledge regarding these topics. I will be waiting for you there, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan for watching. I leave you in Allah's message. Meet again next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.